All right, guys, we're back in Detroit, up here with Brian. More 7.3 stuff. We got one on the dyno. The last time I was up here, we had a pretty heavily modified engine. It was actually the makings of Brian's race engine, and I think it made 790 horsepower with a pretty high-end build. This is more representative of what you might want in your project car, be it for the street, the strip. So Brian's gonna take you through what we got going on here, and then we're gonna fire it up and crank it out and make some pulls and show you how much power this thing makes. Brian, give us a scoop. Yeah, okay, so this engine is a completely stock bottom end. Uh, we do have a revised camshaft in it. We have what we call our stage one B cam in it. And uh, we did, for this pull, we put the, uh, the Visner uh, billet intake on it with a 105 millimeter throttle body. Now before Evan got here, we did run this with the stock intake on it. And with the stock intake on it, we made 600 horsepower and 597 foot-pounds of torque. And the other thing that this has is it has a revised camshaft and it has with it our stage one CNC ported heads that Dave Visner uh, did with us. And they really work extremely well. But this has a stock crank, stock rods and pistons. Stock crank, rods, pistons, block. Um, it does have an electric water pump that we're running, so we have this cool cover covering up the stock water pumps. And, uh, but other than that, it is a, you know, it's a stock motor. In fact, the way I would describe it, it's just completely stock engine with a cam change and an intake manifold. Um, did you have to do anything to the valve train to make the aftermarket cam work? Yeah, we do have a, uh, an aftermarket spring, and it's just a one-off set in the, right now. We're looking at getting a mass produced. So this puts about another 20 pounds on the seat. Okay, so that's an easy modification to make. Yes. All right, so, and of course, this also has a stage one CNC heads on it as well. Yep. Okay, we're just gonna run a test of the uh, stage one CNC heads with our stage one B camshaft, along with the Visner intake with the 105 millimeter throttle body. Pretty slow rate. We do it at about 600 or 300 RPM per second, as opposed to 600. It just is a little bit more representative of where the power is going to be, as opposed to doing a quick pull like a like a drag strip pull. This is more like a regular vehicle pull. So let's see how it did. So if we look here, we did pretty good. It made. Uh, look at the numbers. Made 641 horsepower at 6600 RPM and peak torque 550 at 5500. So not bad for our little 7.3 with stock bottom end, a little bit of port work, camshaft. Pretty good, pretty happy with that. Man, Brian, okay. So 640 horsepower this thing made, which that would be insane in pretty much any project car. Some of the questions that we've been getting on the channel in the comments section are about the stock engine, this 7.3 makes four, four, is rated at 430 by Ford. And those are some pretty big numbers, 640. So that's like almost 200 more horsepower. And it doesn't seem like there's 200 horsepower worth of modifications here. So how do you arrive at that? Why is, why is this thing making so much power on the dyno versus what it makes in the truck? Yeah, that's a really great question. A lot of people do you know, wonder about that. So first, all production manufacturers of vehicles at rate engines rate them by SAA J1349. And it's a common procedure, so it's very easy to compare between manufacturers. Engine builders rate everything at standard temperature and pressure. So there's a difference in atmospheric conditions or the density of air that we correct to. And right. that's over 4% by itself. In addition, J1349 requires a full front end accessory drive. It requires the entire 
air inlet system from the throttle body out through the air cleaners, through all the silencers, through all that stuff. Right. And it also requires the uh, vehicle exhaust system, or if the vehicle exhaust system is not in the cell, you have to simulate the same back pressure that that has. Okay. So let's break that down a little bit. We talked about the, th the difference in um, atmospheric conditions that we correct to. If you take a look at induction and exhaust losses, that's on the order of six to seven percent for a good right. vehicle. Some vehicles could be even substantially more than that. Then you also look like you're not running a Fiat, right? I'm running an electric water pump. So you have no parasitic losses at all going right. on on the front end. You're not driving any accessories, yeah. and that those take up a lot of power. That's probably about ten. I would put that somewhere around ten-ish. Okay. Uh, with this. And then the last thing is we ran this with premium fuel and we optimized the calibration for premium fuel. So you're talking 93 octane? 93 so. octane pump okay. gas. And uh, you know, I'm guessing that that's somewhere around one and a half percent. So you start to add up, you know, the six to seven percent, the four percent for the correction factor, right. the one and a half percent for the calibration, the 10 horsepower, you know, that's about 75 horsepower. We baseline this engine at 507. So I would say right. all of the numbers we're referencing, the 600, the 640, are versus that 507-ish baseline. Right, so one of the things you mentioned is the calibration of the engine. So you're talking about the fuel mapping, and you're talking about the timing advance curve of the engine, how you bring the timing. And the VCT location too. On this engine and the VCT location. So how much performance I hate to use the term being left on the table because Ford has parameters just like any manufacturer when they design an engine. Longevity of the engine, the type of fuel it's going to see, um, the different loads that it's going to um, deal with as far as like driver demand, are you towing and whatnot. So when you do a performance cal, um, you mentioned there's more power, but why is there more power? Yeah, the, well the other thing that you, you, is really important is, you know, the, the engineers at Ford are brilliant and they can get the same power that any tuner can get and your point why don't they right right and it's really about component protection and the biggest piece of that component protection is the catalyst right those catalysts have to work you know for the uh, certification period so I think it's 120,000 miles I could right. be wrong with a lot of date being retired for a few years so they have to make sure all those emission components are going to be as good at the end of that cycle as they were at the beginning and uh, that right. requires uh, some compromise to what the peak power can be by uh, keeping those catalog converters cool. Right. This engine, luckily, is equipped with four knock sensors, right. uh, so it's pretty, uh, pretty robust. Now, how much power is there going from, say, 93 octane with this bottom end in this engine to a race fuel? I, I don't think any. I didn't get in, we didn't get into any detonation when we were testing oh, okay. this. That's good to know. All right, Brian, another great trip up here. What do we have uh, to look forward to next? Well, uh, next we're going to be running the stage two heads. We're going to be running a little longer cams. And uh, I'm also looking forward to get that race engine back on dyno. Uh, so we got a lot of stuff coming up. And uh, can't wait to get it to you. Sweet. Yeah, we want to see that Whipple run. We are dying for that 1,000 plus uh, 7.3 to happen out here. So everybody, we really appreciate everybody. The 7.3 stuff is awesome. We, uh, we got that. Cyclone, if you haven't seen that, it's probably right for one of these 7.3s. If you haven't checked that video, be sure to check that out. And uh, don't forget to drop those comments, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. Hit the like button and have yourself a fantastic day.